Herzlich willkommen zum Auf die Fresse, the Direct W Preview Podcast in English. Yep, I mean, he's Mike, and we're just over a week away from the return of World Tag Team Festival. Mike, how's it going? All good. It's all good. Um, I say it's uh, my favorite uh, weekend of the year, um, so I'm very, very excited for it. It's the first time since 2019 we're getting the Tag Team Tournament back. When we did Catch Grand Prix in 2020, if I was in front of a studio audience. Last year's Catch Grand Prix ended up being, I don't know, do you want to, I, I, I think shit was maybe a bit harsh, but I don't know, it was meant, you know, it was meant to be the round robin thing when it became a one night tournament, which was absolutely not what they were looking for, I think they said at the time, but they've decided not to go with that, we get the tag teams back, and yeah, in what week on Saturday, we're going to be for Turbine Hall 2 in Oberhausen, and yeah. a lot of tag matches. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I say just to go back onto the Catch Grand Prix, I mean, neither, I think when Catch Grand Prix was first announced, uh, I was like buzzing for it because it was, you know, maybe five days. But then I think neither, neither tournament ended up being what they intended it to be because Catch Grand Prix ended up being, uh, the first one ended up being behind closed doors over the course of a month and a half. And I don't know how many people were watching it, to be completely honest, because I'll be honest, I do. I was only watching the bits I was told to. And then the last one was, you know, it was all squeezed into one day. So uh, I think uh, the World Tag Team Fest, I think it's a it's a crowd pleaser. A lot of people prefer that, like that format. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have that back. But yeah, back to Turbine and Hull, the two, the best venue in Overhouse. <laughs> I mean, we'll go through the lineups and what we know so far, but I guess we're going to start with uh, the first show of the weekend. That's this coming well, week on Friday, September 30th. Our first trip to Alma Park and Gelsenkirchen for the first inner circle of the new academy. And yes. yeah, as we record, just one match, but yeah, it's um, going the way, Mike. We're not going to uh, Kaltenberg. It's uh, Gelsenkirchen and much nicer new facility. Yeah, it's um, obviously it's the new venue. We've already spoken about the We Love Wrestling tapings that they've done there before. Um, it's completely different. So yeah, if <laughs> I, I do wonder if anybody is going to end up going to the wrong place, um, and we're just going to hear about it in the following day or something like that. But um, yeah, somewhere completely different uh, in a slightly bigger, um, not say a bigger town, but a bigger catchment area. I mean, it's right, you know, just a ten minute walk or so from the. Um, the Gelsenkirchen train station, so it's a lot easier to get to. Um, whereas comparison, when it was at Essen, Kaltenberg, or Essen, Zoltverein, it was one train an hour, which was not, <laughs> which was not fun when you're kicking out at ten to ten and you have to run for the train, which we never got. So um, yeah, this is not one uh, ticket machine coming back at least. Well, yeah, well, I've now got that deep. I've got the DB Navigator app, which means that, you know, I've, I'm always, I'm always got my ticket before I even stepped on the platform. So, yeah, I'm not so worried now. Well, I hope my phone's not going to act up like it did at Carrot, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> in the UK, you know, you're not having to pay those, you know, conversion fees, you know, linked to PayPal and, you know, dead handy, especially when you're coming in from uh, the airports. But just one match announced for the Inner Circle 12 so far. No doubt, within an hour of us hitting stop, will be a load more announced. But uh, Masha Slamovich and Fuminori Abe, and that is um, it's definitely a match. And I think it's one a lot of people can have a lot of expectations of it being very, you know, I don't know the terms being bastardized, strong style. But there's going to be a lot of lumps being knocked out of both from here. Yeah, for sure. And I think it, it leans into the whole um, inner circle has always been a uh, sort of a uh, and I mean this. In, I don't mean this in a bad way. In a, a bit of a broken biscuits show, it's like lit some bit little bits and pieces, um, 
matches which you wouldn't necessarily normally get, or they're sort of warm up matches for the for the um, you know warm up matches for the uh, for the the weekenders. You want something a bit mad like this to sort of grab your attention. I mean, you know, there's always something which is like, whoa, you know, what's that? <laughs> um, but I always do like about Inner Circles that they don't tend to announce very much. They announce maybe one or two matches, but that's it. Um, you want, there is an element of a sort of a loot box sort of semi show with it, and it's always good fun when you have those. So we'll see if any more does get I think announced. this one will be, uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's say I think Inner Circles, I mean, they've been, especially in Essen, a lot of memories there. I think was it was a tag festival last time where the lights went out for Timo. Uh, yes, Tag Fest 19. Uh, the lights went out on that one. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was uh, one of the. I, I, I actually missed all the lights going out at first because uh, I got, as, as happened pretty much every time I went to Essen, I got locked in the toilets. <laughs> well, you said lose, you'd get lost in this time, Mike. Well, hopefully not. Maybe they've just give us new ones to get out of. But yeah, um, yeah, I think that was the last one with them. And also, was it the Undertaker arrived on that show? I vaguely remember. Yeah, of course, all edged off your demands. Yeah. But yeah, it's so new home, new memories, and yeah, hopefully, you know, be a few more, a few more matches announced. I know there are still tickets left. So if you're coming over, you know, be Friday night this time instead of a Thursday, uh, six thirty door, seven o'clock bell. Head, get yourself over there, and I think they're saying if you've bought the weekend packages, like the tournament or the festival stuff, uh, they're trying to get you to exchange or get your wristband there in a girls' incursion, so you can walk in pretty much get it early, show, yeah. which worked well for carrots. So you know, you can see why we're keeping it and hope it's something we you know, keep. You know, as long as we can for these shows. Yeah, it's always easier to sort of get all that thing, and I say it's just a, it's it's a good way to to just get eased into the weekend. You're not your first your first thing isn't straight into a big show. It's something. It's like a little appetizer, um, something to sort of whet your appetite. If you've never been before, it's sort of your first chance to sort of see how um, German crowds work because they they are certainly different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's definitely worth going to if you haven't already got tickets for it. And if if you're kind of coming in on Friday and you didn't realise it was on, go to Gelsenkirk. <laughs> so head back to Oberhausen, the first show of the weekend. Isn't a tag festival show? We're kicking off with Bempertal. Um So that is let me get the time right. So that's two thirty doors, three thirty bell. And yep. this is one where it's the one show women's tournament. You've got the women's title match, uh, Calypso against Returning Amal and the defending Baby Alice in the freeway. Um, I don't know if you want to go through the quarterfinals that have been announced, but we've got uh, Eva Klasky and Returning Killer Kelly, who I know I'd said that um, or she'd been favoured, but I think add Killer Kelly to the mix. Yeah, I think she's going to be running pretty close to that final. Yeah, you'd think so. Um, I think you'd, you'd certainly think so. And also, um, she is, she will be booked elsewhere on the weekend. Um, she's on, she's on the We Love Wrestling show as well. So you, you know, you you do wonder whether uh, Kelly, I think, has got to be one of the sort of main contenders, especially as like this is home ground for her. Really, uh, she's Portugal, but I think you know this is WXW's home ground for her. So I think she she's got to be in my favourites for this tournament. Of course, first round, she's up against Eva Kalaski. Um, Not had too much for winning one lately. You know, she lost the uh, Women's Championship over... It was after Cad wasn't in Frankfurt. Um, it's yeah. been a few unsuccessful title uh, shots since, but who knows? You know, it would be unlikely when you'd have to say, given that first round opponent, but um, it will certainly put it back in... Hell the of a spoiler, though. Hell yeah. of a spoiler if it, if it is the person who does win. So, you know, with that, maybe... You could see that, but I don't know. I say it's it's a kind of given up trying to make too many predictions about WXW tournaments because there's always something that comes in sort of from left field. Next uh, quarterfinal, we've got Alice Inc. making her debut. She's a regular for Body Slam in Denmark. Yeah, she's done a few bits and pieces around you. I uh, think Wrestle Island. Uh, she's done a few shots for. Uh, was meant to have wrestled at the. Um, she was in the showcase. Wasn't showcase she was meant to be. Yeah. Oh, God, who was it? Um, Carl Samoa, I think, was the sub. 
remember correctly. Yeah. So this will be a debut for WXW on a you know, full WXW show. Uh, she's up against Nikki Foxley, who's done a few of the Academy tapings, uh, not Academy, the Empty Arena tapings. Uh, she's had a few similarly unsuccessful title shots against both Baby Allison and Eva Klasky. I'd have to put it down to rank outside of this, but again, no yeah. quarterfinals, it, no, these are kind of the pick em. Yeah, for sure. I think Alice Inc. is um, the people that I know who watch it more than I do. Um, Alice Inc. is one that obviously is quite popular amongst sort of the Scandi people. Um, so yeah, I think she, she's going to be a, a... I think she would probably progress from this match at least. Um, Foxley, not really... I can't think of her ever being on a WXW event, really. I can't remember her. I know she's been on lots of cards, but not necessarily ones that have been televised. I think she did a few of the Steffi tapings, but I think since yeah. cards came back... It's... I know she did the over traveling one, which we were wondering was that going to be released, and I think also the first reel of wrestling it wasn't released. So, yeah. you know, first time uh, for a lot of people, I'd guess, in Open House and seeing her. Um, next up, we've got a de- another debut Anastasia Bardot from France. So, let me just find the notes I've scribbled down here, and of course, I haven't written any down. Um, but she's, no, no, she's um, paid for APC in France, Rings of Europe in Austria and of course Portugal CTW haven't seen that much of her I'll be honest but she's up against Orshi and again yeah. no you're talking about spoilers this is could be a pretty big upset if um Orshi does go out in the first round. I'd be shocked if Orshi went out to um and I mean this I mean no uh no malice here a complete unknown um Anastasia Bardot I couldn't tell you any the first thing about her really um, so she's a, she's a niche name for me anyway. Um, so yeah, it would be a huge shock if Orshi went out to this person. But um, I, I I personally think Orshi has to go to the final, if not win it, really. And then the last quarter final, we've got Ava Everett. She's back for another run in the Brexit against the returning Masha Slamovich. Yeah, and I'd say she didn't have the Killer Kelly return. That to me would have been the pick for first round matches. Well, Ava. Ava Masha. Yeah. Um, I think it probably still is. I think it's probably the best wrestling match in the first round. I think I think uh, the excitement comes in the next round when Kelly's mixing up with everybody else. Um, sort of the the people who have progressed, so but um, you know, it's uh that that the Ava because Ava Ever and Masha have they've wrestled a lot in the states before haven't they uh let me do a quick cage match i know they've been in you know, the same kind of promotions but I yeah oh know if their you know, paths have crossed that much so while i buy time for so, so look at my notes and i had michelle green down on the line but i know she did that uh was it the quiz schlack thing yes but is she not in it anymore i'm looking at the lineup so uh bardo or she Klasky, kelly Alice Inc., Nikki Foxley, Masha, Ava. I don't know if she's like an alternate or not, but, but no, her name ain't on the lineup anymore. As far as the Ava Everett, uh, Masha Slamovich thing, they've uh, had two matches, both in America for. Uh, yeah. Most recently, uh, last August for Limitless, with uh, Masha winning. And okay. then uh, October 2019, she won a handicap match against Ava and her then tag team partner, Angel Sinclair. So, not too many interactions, but you know, again, running in similar circles. So, yeah, I, at least for the flying aspect, that's going to be uh, you know, probably the most interesting one, at least for not two, not two flying, but more familiar for, from the States. Yeah, for sure. And of course, the title match, returning Amal up against Calypso, who's won non-title match, won by countout against Baby Allison. Do you see a title change here? Um, I think you could get a title change here. Um, Amal's around for a bit, isn't she? Um, she's around at least until the new year. So um, it would be sort of makes sense storyline wise for Amal to immediately sort of steamroll into the title. Likewise, to be honest, it would make sense for Calypso to win because she's had two wins over Ellison. So um, yeah, uh, I think it's definitely. I, I do think at this point, an Allison retain is. An outside bet, really, 
from what for me personally. Um, I think Calypso, Calypso being in there is is possibly the um, is the easy way to get Amal to win because um, maybe you don't pin Allison, but equally, I don't know. I could see Calypso doing it as well. Um, I couldn't really call this one. I my heart says my head says Amal though wins. It's got to think as well. Amal never lost the title. She had it. Yeah, exactly. Eight, so. And we have been doing that whole thing of you know how many days run, how many defenses. So if I won, it's a it's a real gimmick. You know, I you know any of those wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. And of course, you've got the winner of Fempatal, you've got the semis in the final on this show. They're also in line for title shot too. So whoever wins that one could be in for a very busy weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um and I think as I say you could you could have um I think there's a very good chance you could have you could, I, the title could change hands twice over the weekend. To be honest, I think it's that sort of <laughs> that sort of weekend. Like really. shot on a charity. Yeah, for sure. But uh, then we move on to the opening night of Tag Festival. So it's six thirty door, seven thirty bell. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, non tournament matches. So Mike Bailey and Bobby Guns, uh, I guess an in de facto number one contenders match. When it takes on Tristan Archer on the Sunday, and we've got a street rematch on Carrot Eighteen. Yep, and I still have nightmares of uh, Speedball's fingers and thumbs being bent oh, back yeah. by Bobby Guns. Then we've got a street fight, Jan Sims against Heisenberg. Uh, that's playing off was a dead end. Um, with it, you know, the, you know, obviously had the fight before, and then after, after the dead end, that sparked up again. Um, hope it goes better than the one at um, not Extreme Rules. What what three XXW one is a draw blank? Oh, um, rules. broken rules, yeah. Yes, hopefully it's a you know, little bit better because I don't think neither of us with that struck on there much there, but at least this one, it's a street fight. It doesn't feel like it's been shoehorned in, so who knows yeah. this one? Yeah, and exactly. The opening uh, night of Tag Festival, so we'll just run down the matches and if you want to pick out the end. Uh, block A, we've got Sanities, Eric Young and Axel Tisher against the Calamari Drunken Kings of Master Takanashi and Chris Brooks. Block A's also got... Uh, for Pretty Bastards, that's a Huron and Maggot against uh, Sensor Balto and Igor Blanc. I will never say the name they've given them. I'm sorry, that to me is just... The French Adores. You terrible. said it to me. <laughs> uh, Block B kicks off with Ambosses, Robert Dreisker and Icarus against Shikahiro Irie and Fuminori Abe. Only team in this tournament not being given a tag name, which I'm reading way too much into that. Uh, and also, yeah, I don't think there's anything to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess you couldn't save the astronauts because I know everyone was hoping for Abe and Namura coming over, but... Yeah, that would have nice. And then uh, Violence is Forever, that's uh, Kevin Koo, Dom Guarini against Rotten Flot, uh, Mikhail Schenkenberg, Nikita Charisma. Again, opening night, you know, opening night results don't really mean that much, you know, if you've seen enough tournament wrestling or especially round robin stuff, you know, nobody's been eliminated here, so anyone can take a loss, anyone can take a win. Yeah. Um, you know, could mean more tricky paths, but you know, these things are planned out to you know, deliver you know, exciting crescendos on the uh, Monday night. So, pretty decent lineup for first night. I think everyone's got to rise on speedball, Bobby Guns. Um, I think the uh, Amboss, Irie, RB1 for me is my pick for tag matches for absolutely for sure. Yeah, and I think the um, CDK Sanity match could be quite interesting as well. Um, a little bit, uh, kind of. We, we don't, obviously we're not making predictions, but one thing I think is quite interesting is um, the uh, the the balance of the blocks. I think is a bit odd, uh, in the sense that um, the domestic the the domestic face teams, and I'm using in inverted commas there, the domestic face and domestic heel teams are both joined together in the same group, uh, which is in the same block. So, for example, you have um, the bastards and the French adores, which I would assume would be the face, the face domestic, the domestic faces, yep. in the same group, and you also have Amboss and Rot and Flot in the same group. Which, for me, I don't know, feels a bit odd. Um, I don't know if that's odd for you as well. But... It certainly jumps out. I mean, the oh. night two lineups. Um, you know, you've got potential block winners. You know, in, in one of the matches. Yeah, I mean. Again, no, we've not. I don't say we've not been much high on tag teams lately. And obviously, we've had. I know, ideally, being very also hungry, we've you know, probably would have tipped us a bit stronger in the Ambos direction. No, rotten yeah. flop, but yeah, 
I think in trying not to tip off obvious winners, we've kind of you know, skewed the balance a little bit too far either way. Um, I mean, make for, I mean, make for some interesting matches. I mean, you've got you no know, bad guys trying to, you know, you know, I'll cheat each other on better word, but um, yeah, I, again, I, I suppose it depends how they played. I think you're not going to get. He's me giving the absolute death knell here. You're not going to get the comedy, ha ha, no, we're going to, no, we cheat, well, we cheat too, let's do a finger poke, you no know, kind of stuff. But I've seen yeah. quite a few, quote, baby face tag matches this year, which have died on its ass. Yeah. And I do wonder if you're going to get, not, no, sound quick, but I do wonder if you're going to get a few matches which are going to struggle because of that. Maybe wrong, but, you know, again, I've, I've seen quite a few of those lately. In person, where it's been, not just not meshed, but again, it's up to the guys to make it work. Yeah, of course, exactly. That's exactly the thing, isn't it? So, move on to Sunday. We start the afternoon with the Wheel of Wrestling Live. They're subtitling it Axeman versus Barbell. It's one and only appearance of uh, Metahan over the weekend. Uh, of course, main event Metahan. So and I think that one was a 16 carat 2019. Yeah, First an angle they, right? yes, an angle they sort of set up, and I'd completely forgotten about it, but uh, back when Alexander Wolf won uh, the shotgun title at um, 16 Carat 2020, um, Metihan, uh, yeah, Metihan uh, and the rest of Azel decided to, um, decided to sort of attack them, and then obviously COVID happened, Tisha got sent back to the States, and... Um, <laughs> Metahan then eventually got signed, so so it's kind of um, ships passing the night. Sh- yeah, exactly. Um, so there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of bad blood for this. Um, not sure how much is. I think I think this could be. Uh, I think this is going to be a really good mat- fun match. It's going to be great to sort of see Lucky back. Yep. Um, but um, beyond that, it's kind of a, you know it's a bit of a. Is the heat still there? I don't know. It, it, I had to be reminded of it. I mean, if we see um, Abdul Aytach kicking around, we know we're just picking up where they left off pre-COVID. But um, yeah, I mean, it, I suppose I suppose you might you could have Metahan doing a bit of um, shenanigans on sort of Saturday night, maybe. Um, so I think you know there's 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 potential for a bit of that around the thing. Maybe keep the heat going. But I think I, I, the thing is is this this show this show didn't need stacking because people who were going to the weekend or anyway would have gone for this um but it's a it, it's an extra sort of cherry on the top of the the weekend like it doesn't this let's say this this show this match this this show didn't need this match in my in my opinion this could have quite a lineups. sorry it's if you look for lineups mike it's the only match on this entire weekend which is XWE against XWE. And you know, what we spoke about was the last episode. Of yeah, but it's, it's not yeah, WWE. Yeah. It's NXT UK, which nobody watched. So, you know, if it was, well, if, it was if it was Eric Young versus, like, Eric Young versus Tim Baxter. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, again, it's, like, say, you know, not, I mean? it's, it's, a big, it's a big match. I do wonder, you know, Maybe there'll be a video patch or something coming out. It'll be interesting to see, and like you say, you no, know, we need to be reminded of it. So it'll be interesting to see just how many, you no, know, how, you know, exactly how they pick it up. Bear in mind, it's been what, two years, two and a half years since it uh, kicked off. But elsewhere on the card, uh, Bobby Guns against Masha Slamovich. It's a match they campaigned for on Twitter briefly, and they got it. Um, so I think this will be pretty much in the vein of that Arbe match at Inner Circle. So you'd hope so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, women's tag gave Everett and Eva Klask against Killer Kelly and Maria Della Rosa. Yeah. Uh, shotgun title four way Maggot defending against Gullius Jr., Michael Knight, and Ilya Bloom. Which I, I mean, Michael I don't, wins, I wins don't see any of them winning it, to be honest. <laughs> maybe um, Michael Knight, but yes, maybe again, Michael I, Knight. I mean, like, I hate playing this guess who elimination. Thing, but, I think this is his first booking since uh, Coward Weekend. Yeah. I think Ilya's the, you know, to me, designated pin eater in this. Yeah. Um, you've also got uh, Lawrence Roman against Hector Invictus. Finally, the glue of WXW's back on a card. 
and Peach Tahani against Fast Time Moodle. They also did announce Jern Simmons for this lineup, but no matches, so I don't know if he's going to be running in somewhere. Um, you chuck Jern yeah. in with any. You can chuck Jern in with anybody. Yeah, chuck him in. Chuck him in with Eric Eric Young. That'd be great. <laughs> but again, I mean, you know, an afternoon show was so what six matches on that card. Tidy lineup, you know, pretty interesting main event, even about you no know, uh, digging up the recent history. So, yeah, if you you know if you're not uh, too hungover from Saturday night. Some uh, stuff well worth getting up for, you know, Sunday afternoon. Then the second night of Tag Festival, so 6.30 door, 7.30 bell. Uh, we've got the Unified World Wrestling title main event, so Tristan Archer defending against uh, Bailey or Guns. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I, again, we can't predict because obviously one half isn't there, but I would have to think, you know, whether, you know, this should be like a statement win for Tristan Archer. Yeah. Um, I think it's the, this is, um, it, I think it all depends on who wins. I think Guns winning over Archer would be, um, is more likely than Bailey winning over Archer. But then equally, I don't know, you know, is Bailey someone who can, is Bailey someone who can maybe come over a bit more often? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think Bailey should have. Should 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 at some point, but be WXW champion because I feel like he's one of the sort of the home guys, really. He's certainly been around enough, especially for these big weekends. Yeah. and I think you know you could you could I think you could sell Speedball on you could sell a Speedball main event at tag uh, sorry at sixteen carat. Um, whether not sure if I'd particularly enjoy you know Speedball being only on the big shows. I don't know how much I would enjoy that, but I think yeah. um, there's there's obviously a lot of um, I, I, I this this I don't have any doubts about Archer's reign really at this point. I think I was very very doubtful in March, but now I'm perfectly fine with it. I think he's completely justified it. He's had, and I think a win, a big win like this is is um, against two overwhelmingly popular people as well. Um, a big win like this is a um, is a you know good way of cementing him as the big baddie. And when we get to sixteen carat or anniversary, for example, I think you can announce somebody big against him, and I think it's it sells it. But I mean, this weekend isn't being sold on a isn't being sold on a world title match, really. So you kind of have to you got. I think they they've got one eye on anniversary or one eye on carrot really with this, aren't they? And I guess the other thing you've got to look at as well is, you know, just announced this week, to break you are running a double header with Smash in Canada, and uh, yeah. on to November twentieth in London, not that one, um, the wrong London. Yeah, and see, I mean, I know. Speedball I mean, I suppose Speedball could win it there, right. wouldn't it? Take it to Canada, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't even think of that, but you know, there's there's lots of options for it. Um, as I said, it's difficult to predict it when you don't know who the contender is, really. I'm just looking now quickly on Cage Match. He has worked for Smash before, albeit before you know, the COVID shutdown. But yeah, it's not like it'll be all, oh, hey, he's a guy who happens to be the champion with a little bit of background. So that wouldn't, no, that, it's an outside shout, but that would not surprise me. I mean, Archer is going more. to Canada as well, as is Guns. So, you know. But all three bases covered. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it's difficult to think, really. So we're going on to the tag matches for the Sunday night. Uh, Pretty Bastards against Sanity in Block A. Uh, Calamari Drunken Kings against Sense of Ultra Nigel Blanc also in Block A. Uh, Amboss against Rotten Flot for Block B. And Violence of the Forever against Iria and Arbind. My God, those Block B matches and the world title match. Yeah, that sold me. I mean, I've already got the ticket on there, but... yeah. Those two tag matches and the world title match that sold me. No violence yeah. for Iria and Arby. I am expecting I you're to, tonight. Don't have you're, like you're struggle to um I think if you like that sort of thing, you'll struggle to beat that, I think, for a lot of people that weekend. Yeah. So anyway, Sunday's normally the wrap-up night, but of course they've kicked things back a day because it's bank holiday weekend in Germany. So we roll into Monday, uh, 11 30 in the morning doors, 12 30 afternoon bell. It's the Wheel of Wrestling Wildcard Edition, and this is kind of like 
I don't like open auditions. We've had guys send tapes in. They've been you know, picked and we've got the whole card book, which is a good touch because before it was just like a roster and no, I think some pretty decent matches in this lineup. So we've got uh, Man Like Jerese against Jared Diaz and Eli Isom, I think uh, former Ring of Honor guy there. Cheeseburger, of course, formerly Ring of Honor against Danny Miles. Chris the king Dice. of the uh, New Japan Rumble. God, yes. <laughs> That's the only reason I know Cheeseburger. And of course, it's Jushin Thunder Liger gave him the short tape, remember, right, the palm strikes and made yeah. a career of that for a bit. Uh, Chris Tyson and Maverick, both from Hungary, against Joe Keys and Dante Caballero. Uh, there's another couple of guys who are, I'll say, ex Ring of Honor. Like, I've seen the names for, for a while. Um, trying, like, obviously, Joe Keys. Just, trying to, just check and make sure it's right, and I'm not, not signing law the wrong way. So, both of them currently wrestle in uh, Maryland Championship Wrestling as a tag team called, called Cartel. But Joel Keys uh, used to be in Chikara as one of the cycling guys. Okay. Which, yeah, like, yeah, uh, Cheeseburger, Eli, Eli Isom, Caballero, Joel Keys. Yeah, this is um, some of the displaced Ring of Honor guys on this lineup. Yeah, uh, I don't think the, the, thing, the thing with those is that I think you, all you've got to do is look at what being on a WXW weekend, uh, having great matches did for, you know, Rust Taylor. Um, Ross Taylor was kind of a bit of a he was kind of nowhere really for years wasn't he um, and then he did that weekender and then pretty much immediately after he got signed by um, WWE didn't he yep uh, he got no, signed so. by WWE oh, no, no he, sorry he got signed for the New Japan Strong thing and then the he New ended Japan up in Strong WWE. WWE now he's back on New Japan Strong with flirts of Ring of Honor AEW as well so, so yeah, yeah. You, you've got to sort of if you're coming on this show, you've kind of got to have one eye on a trajectory like that, really. Especially yep. for the Americans. Uh, Kevin Lloyd against Thomas Shire. So, uh, Shire's one of those guys I've been wanting to see live for a while. No, he did a UK tour early this year, but like, this isn't is a knock North, on him. It? It's more of a knock on the scene we have. I saw nowhere advertising him. No. And I know that's kind of been the thing for a lot of people. No, is it... Um, Maverick and Gullis Jr. They you no know, meant for the UK run, so nobody advertised those guys. It's like I don't know whether it's because we're a bit leery of flying. Well, they didn't. They didn't even work anywhere, did they? Yeah. So I don't know if it's just you know they're overtraining, but yeah, the UK doesn't seem to be that hot for you know people coming over and having like an extended run. Well, War Horse is about to have a second run, which yeah, I guess there was space for some, but yeah. At least I didn't see uh, Thomas Schreier getting advertised anyway, so good to see him landing in Germany for this uh, particular show. Uh, Kev Lloyd, I think he did a few ambitions. He did um, ambition, yeah. Um, got Steve Kev. Payne and Akira, so you Akira's know, normally a deathmatch guy. Payne, he did... So he's one of those things, he, he's been into Rex before, like when, when they, you know, the, the shotgun day, so that kind of dates it. Yeah, years ago, wasn't it? And I've seen him on like low cards for shows in around New York, but I think he did um oh god it's an evolve like ran like these random or well, evolves you no know, when the dying days of evolve where they like pick up random guys from the area to pack the cards out. Yeah, I'm looking through now. So recently he did AW Dark back in February. Um Violence and Suffering. Yeah. So a lot of promotions you'd probably see on things like you know IWTV that kind of stuff. Um, so again, you know, maybe this can be parlayed into something. Of course, the key with you no know, normally deathmatch guy, like I say. Um, yeah, I don't think we'd be seeing glass and uh, light tubes here, but who knows? Weird things have happened in Double X. We <laughs> they might be banned in Germany. <laughs> we don't know. Well, to have the Zack Saber Junior cast and Beck light tube match all those years ago. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah. got uh, LJ Cleary and Jaden Newman. So uh, Newman won the uh, Scenic City Invitation earlier this year. Okay. Uh, very highly recommended, at least from you know, when I used to watch you know, the Southern US Indies, something that I fell out of and need to get back into. But you know, it comes to you know, fairly recommended, LJ Cleary. Or yeah, we know him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I 
it should be a good match, but I think it's going to be more interesting how the crowd reacts, bearing in mind everything's gone on. You know, Newman, you know, Pimps an unknown, although I guess for a few of us, you know, probably know him a little bit better, but I think this is probably going to be one way it'll be a case of, you know, guys win over the crowd because we're going to be there for you. Yeah. Um, I think it's um, it's it's indicative of, of the state of the Irish scene that um, I think if LJ Cleary had been announced three years, no, four years ago for WXW, it would probably be the biggest reaction of the weekend. Uh, now I don't actually know anybody who's even noticed uh, that LJ's on the card. So not naming names, but were you no know, other OTT guys announced you no know, three you know, just before COVID, you no. Know, enough to be you know, have a big breakout run. Now yeah. it's like you know, again, you know, stuff happening not gonna be really litigate all that, but yeah, it just shows how things have fallen. Yeah, for sure. And then last up we've got Alex Ryman against O'Shea Edwards. Uh Ryman he's not actually had a run in uh Europe already this year, just looking pulled up his cage match. So he was in um Project Nova in Berlin February, Pro Wrestling Holland and he lost to Orshi at a... So, remember, after Cowdfey did the uh, not-taped WXW Academy against the HCW oh, Dojo? Yeah, yeah. So, he was on that, um, I guess, representing the WXW Academy. He lost to Orshi. Um, yes, he's had a brief run, but yeah, I guess this is his main show debut. And just looking for it, his cage match, um, mostly works for East Coast Pro Wrestling. Seeing like you know the same kind of item TV promotions like Pro Wrestling Magic, um, Outbreak Wrestling, XWA, not that uh, one with Dan Reed used not, to run. Not, yeah, not our one. No. Um, but yeah, so again, you no, know, there's a name you no know, primed to you know grab this you no know, chance of both hands up against uh, O'Shea Edwards, and there's a guy I really want to see break out. Like I've seen bits and pieces of him, but he, you know. If things go well, he could be one who steals his entire weekend. Yeah, um, I'll be honest, I don't really know very many of these at all, and I've kind of purposely um, avoided learning about them because I want to be surprised. Um, but I've, you've you've kind of bigged up O'Shea quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I'm quite excited to see what, what, what I'm missing out, really. Um, I haven't cursed him, but... Yeah, X X Ring of Honor, he's done a lot of like you know a pretty big lad he's done. Um just looking through he went through the finals of New South's um Heart of the Southern 16 host tournament last year. Uh yeah. lost to Alex Kane in action game March last year. So a few you know, been up against a few names you know, we've seen through and around the XW. So yeah, hopefully you know, you know, gets the chance, grabs both fans and you know actually managed to parlay with some something, I guess. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And then, of course, got the finals of World Tag Team Festival, so the final block matches we have. Uh, block A is for Pretty Bastards against the Calamari Drunken Kings, uh, Sanity against uh, Volta and Idle Blanc, Block B is Iwie and Arby against Drop and Flot, and Violence is Forever against Amboss. Two block winners, of course, go through the finals, and traditionally this has been for the tag titles, so if Rock and Flot don't make it through, then new tag team champions at the end of the weekend. Yeah, and you I'm... may find out on you may find we may know by Sunday that the titles are being changed. Yes, because uh, terms gone by, we have had you know, the reigning champions out for the final night, which you know, spiced all up a bit. But it's going to be uh, very curious to see if add anything more because you know five match card, all tag matches. It's well, there's always big... something. Yeah, I mean, no, there's always storylines from that build up, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what's, what's going to come out of, you know, the Sunday wheel of, uh, yeah, the Sunday wheel of wrestling taping, or, you no know, stuff that you know, falls out from uh, other matches we may add early in the weekend. Yeah. You need, you need, you know, you need Hector on the card, you know. Um, Hector scrambles? Yeah, you just, just chuck Hector on every match, every card. Not in every match, but <laughs> chuck him on every card. Well, if, he's, if he's paid for everyone, he's not going to argue. Yeah, exactly. Just just uh, give him a couple of matches. And again, I don't know, you know from those who have booked on the early shows, how many of them will still be around. Um, you know, I'm guessing you know, the Femme Fatale winner may get their match on night three, uh, depending on who wins, of course. Um, 
I would guess if it was you no know, Ava, Eva or Kelly, it's not going to be on the Wheel of Wrestling show on the Sunday since we've already booked in no. a tag match there. But um, yeah, brings plenty to sink your teeth into. And you no, know, it's Friday through Monday, so a longer weekend than usual, I guess, for those flying in. But um, yeah, be interesting to get back to Germany where the only masks you need to wear on planes and trains and buses. Yeah, uh, well, I think you yeah you need to wear them out and about, but um, yeah, I think um, it's very very exciting. Um, it's it seems um, I, well, I mean, I, I I'm kind of having a it seems a little a long way away because I'm going to Vienna beforehand because I'm watching WXW there. So, um, it'll be overdosing on them. Sorry, it'll be overdosing on them by the end of the by the time we get to the end. Of the yeah. Weekend. Yeah, I, I should try and find something midweek or something, but I don't think we're doing that. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be um, it, it's going to be a great weekend. As I say, as I say, it's always my um, my favourite. I've always preferred Tag Fest to Carrot. I just always have. Uh, I think it's because the tournament isn't as much of a focus as Carrot is. Um, you know, and the festival weekenders they always have. You know a shock there's always a surprise you know there's always something interesting going on and it kind of it always feels like instead of being a season finale it's kind of like this is the mid mid season finale uh, the, the the big bit the big thing which makes you excited for the for the winter and i blood just strong cold what if sense of Vol- what if what if sense of alto and idol blanc come out in batman and robin costumes well you, you know what's coming <laughs> don't you um, yeah, we don't want that. To don't springboard for the love of God, don't springboard. <laughs> God, yeah, they could do that, couldn't they? Um, <laughs> if they were teasing it early this year, then a lot of wrestling happened and it's kind of been, yeah. Well, we block, block A could potentially have both domestic teams break up. Let's face it, that's a quite yeah, likely the, the situation. Thing. You've obviously we've got the unresolved. No, I'm a shotgun champion. No, I'm a shotgun champion stuff, which they've purposely not addressed that much. No, um, and it confuses a lot of people. I don't say there's there's people who who I know who've kind of reached out to me and says, "So what's actually going on?" <laughs> <laughs> well, the and, shiny uh, shotgun belt's not the real one. You can buy it all through SL Wrestling, but that's not yeah. the real championship. I've probably touched that very belt because I bet it's the one that they would had on the. The stand. Merch tables. Yeah. <laughs> I've probably touched that very one. Um yeah, um it's uh it's I think uh, I don't know, the French doors I don't know, unless they're just a thing that lasts forever. But <laughs> it's just there's a lot to uh lot to sort of digest, I think is what we, we sort of say. The weird thing is they were Pushing for a tag title run at uh, Broken Rules, and then of course, Sense had the time out of his broken wrist. Yeah, so he, he got his stuff you, stolen as well, didn't he? Yes, so yes. Yeah, so do you go back to that and you know, do the tag title run, or do you just skip that bit out? Because I mean, you know, it, I mean, they're done the show they did with APC. You know, someone looks very much like him, you know, is another character, that's all I'm gonna say, <laughs> but um, you no, know, do you go, do you? Fully go down that road, or do you have, you know, it's, it's obviously not Sin Cara versus Sin Cara, but you have the good masked guy and the bad masked guy. Try to say that ten times fast. Um, you know, do you go down that road, or do you, you know, are they the, you know, the success story of the tournament? I mean, you know, the last few years of you know, Tag Festival, we've not exactly been having that much rice button. Yeah, because, well, the last one was won by the Bastards, which was. Um... That was obviously unexpected, but it was a hill team, kind of not very fancied. And then the one before that was JFK. Again, not really that fancy prior to the tournament. Um, I think a lot of people were thinking it was Tim and Tim and Walter winning that one. Yep. Um, I think they won 2017, which was the uh, rice pudding, but... Not yeah, so, th- so there's, always, um, there's always a bit of a... Um, yeah, there's always a shock winner with this one, and but I I, I honestly couldn't call it. I think I, there's there's arguments I think for a lot of the teams. Um, well, I don't think 
any of the imp I don't think well I say I don't think any of the imports except for possibly one um can do it um I would love it if RB and RB won it that would be brilliant um because I think they're incredibly popular um I think you could possibly make an argument for Titsanity but I don't know how long Young is sticking round um no, soon has been having quite a few European <sighs> tours with uh, Russell Carnival or at least booked by uh, Russell Carnival yeah yeah, so I, I think, um, yeah, I in my head, I'm thinking it's it, the final is Sanity versus Ambos in my head, um, with probably Ambos going over, however, it's and then they do sort of free burden on the title. That's the only thing I can sort of think. That's what I, have... us, you know, we, you know, I think for two of us, we've you no know, plot in our head, you know, it kind of builds up to back to the roots and another uh, Kafi Schlacht, which is yeah. a natural way around. Um, only yeah, so you end up with you end up with sanity where you end up, well yeah, I think that the k fix like is what you're aiming for really um, you know, do you bring back a do you bring back a um, you know, a Tim to join Sam, do you, do you, do you have you know, do you do the k fix like with, with Amboss against uh, Sanity with Damo and Tim, you know do you do, you do that that's that's me fantasy booking that really that would be it's lovely. That shows me you know, we've you know, saying we need like a double X to be home forces and you know Tim Fash would you know do one in either of those uh, lineups. I think who was the who was that fourth member of Sanity? Um, oh, the um... uh, Sawyer Fulton. Mad yeah, Man so Fulton do, 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 do you bring that. Sawyer Fulton in as the fourth guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the I mean, BA, BA. I mean, generally. I, I've not seen his name around for a while. Like I know he was with Impact. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think that's probably unlikely. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking now. He's not done Impact since March, according to this. So, guess he's no longer with Impact, Impact Mike. Yeah, there we he's go. He's been then. doing like Pro Wrestling Revolver. Um, he, was the, he was one of the uh, higher lads, wasn't he? Yeah, so yeah. I think maybe you know if it is, it's gonna be like a real outside pick. But yeah, I mean, I think if we are building up to tag for a term, not to Kafik Schlacht, to be use home force or whoever's gonna be the big guys up against Amboss, they need to be established pretty quick. And I don't know whether that is, you know, Senzo and Idol, you know, we've tried that before, whether it's well, I think you, you your, home, your home, your home, your home force has to be, um. You have to look at Yearn, Guns, Tisha, and probably somebody like Tahani or Levaniel, don't you? Um, I think that's what you look as your, your your home core. But you know, equally, that's that's there's a lot of as I said, there's a lot of football to be played between the, then and now. So <laughs> we've got plans for Formula H and absolutely shattered between now and then as well. So yeah, exactly. Have so, so. something of an idea coming out of Tag Festival, and obviously, you know, I think after that. What is it? We've got obviously the um Austria show this coming Friday. Just looking up after them, yeah. we've got a bunch of the Wheel of Wrestling Lives, uh Drive of Champions in Frankfurt on the 12th of November, uh the 22nd anniversary, December 17th in Oberhausen, and Dead End in Hamburg. And at the moment there's no Kafik Schlacht or Back to Roots list on here. Not yet. So maybe our calves have all been wrong and we've just fancy booked ourselves into a shield brother yeah maybe maybe it won't be the first time <laughs> Bernard, that's it for the world tag team festival so again that's next week you know if you come to Oberhausen, and bump into you know, bump into say hi we don't bite unless you ask us to but um i guess the podcast might probably do like a post show wrap up you know after both back from germany and you no know, evidence hits yeah. on demand but depending on how things go over there you know maybe try and record some stuff get some bite-sized bits and pieces up Especially when yeah. major happens. Yeah, exactly. And um I think um yeah, we'll we'll definitely do the post show wrap up. You might get some bonus stuff from us. We'll kind of play it by ear, see what happens. <laughs> if it, in the last few uh well obviously not cab but before we had like storms and yeah you know, really bad weather. If, it, if we're gonna get you no know, absolutely blown away or you no know, drowned out, forget it. But we'll see how it goes. But um 
Anything to plug, Mike, before you head over to Australia this week? Not really. Um, I've got, obviously, the Grand Hopper's Guide, but there's nothing new, I think, for a while. Um, we did we did do just do one a couple of weeks back, so if you've not listened to that, so that's Ground Hopper's Guide on YouTube. Uh, type in Ground Hopper's Guide on and Eddie, and you'll find us. Um, but apart from that, no, not really. Just make sure, if you're following me on anything, so follow me at Mike Kilby on pretty much everything, and you can, um, yeah, you can see what i'm up to because i'll probably be posting lots of stuff from my the long road to oberhausen because it's 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 i'm not i'm not coming home from vienna <laughs> the well, long road yes, to oberhausen. It's badly wrong for your flights mate <laughs> yeah but um yeah you can follow me on twitter at in wrestling instagram at back body drop been a bit quiet in terms of reviews lately things will pick up after you know oberhausen i bet but yeah head up backbodydrop.com or the socials there and if we don't see you in Upper House, and we shall see you on the podcast in a few weeks' time. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss.